Students, it's exciting to have you here in my latest video of Special Topics 3, Systematic Review of Chapters 9 through 11 from General Chemistry. In this one, we're going to begin by reviewing the Combined Gas Law. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and hit it. So the following equation, which is equation 10.8 from our book, is known as the Combined Gas Law. It combines and interrelates elements of pressure, volume, and temperature. So P1, V1, and T1 are all initial pressure, volume, and temperatures, while P2, V2, and T2 are all final pressure, volumes, and temperatures. This equation can be used to predict gases' pressures, volumes, and temperatures as those things are varied. Let's go ahead and use that by looking at a problem. A fixed amount of gas at 21 degrees Celsius exhibits a pressure of 752 torr and occupies a volume of 5.12 liters. Calculate the volume the gas will occupy if the pressure is changed to 1.88 atmospheres while the temperature is held constant. And then calculate the volume the gas will occupy if the temperature is increased to 175 while the pressure is held constant. Now I invite you to try this problem on your own first. If you wish, I'll post a link here to a separate video in which I go ahead and answer it. Here's another problem. A sample of a gas originally at 25C and one atmosphere pressure in a 2.5 liter container is subject to a new pressure of 0.85 atmospheres and a new temperature of 15 degrees C. The final volume of the gas is what? Now I'm not going to do this for you, but we'll let you do it on your own. Keep in mind you will be using the combined gas law equation and be sure to change your temperatures to kelvins before you do so. Here's another question. A sample of a gas originally at 29C and 1.25 atmospheres pressure in a three liter container is allowed to contract until the volume changes to 2.2 liters and the temperature changes to 11C. The final pressure of the gas is what? Once again, you'll have to use the combined gas law and be sure to change your degrees Celsius to kelvins. Now we move on to the ideal gas law. The following equation is known as the ideal gas law. Where P is a gas's pressure, V is its volume, N is the number of moles of the gas, and R is something called the ideal gas constant, and T is the gas's temperature. This equation can be used to interconvert between any ideal gas's pressure, volume, and temperature. So what is the ideal gas constant? Well, that actually depends on what units you're using. So here's a table that shows various common forms of the ideal gas constant using different units. So you want to make sure that you select the ideal gas constant that you use based on the units that you've been given and the units you want to get to. The most commonly used ideal gas constants are the first two listed in this table. I ended up using the first one so much in high school chemistry that to this day I still have it memorized. Are you ready for some problems then? Here goes. How many moles of a gas are there in a 45 liter container at 25 degrees Celsius and 500 millimeters of mercury? I'm not going to do this for you, but we'll let you do it on your own. Keep in mind that you'll need to use the ideal gas law. Depending on which value of R you select, you'll also possibly and likely need to change your units from uh, degrees Celsius, for example, to kelvins and millimeters of mercury potentially to atmospheres. I'll let you, of course, do that on your own. Here's another question. How many moles of gas are there in a 50 liter container at 22 degrees Celsius and 825 torr? Once again, the major battle here is changing your units to the proper units using the proper value of R and then just throwing them into the ideal gas law equation. Here's another question. The Mon process produces pure nickel metal via the thermal decomposition of nickel tetracarbonyl. What volume in liters of carbon monoxide is formed from the complete decomposition of 444 grams of nickel tetracarbonyl at 752 torr and 22 degrees Celsius? Now this seems like a pretty uh, challenging problem. I'm not going to answer this one for you here, but I will post a link here to a separate video in which I do that you're welcome to click after attempting to work it on your own to see how to do it. Now to another question. What volume in liters of NH3 gas at standard temperature and pressure is produced by the complete reaction of 7.5 grams of water according to this equation? Now I'm not going to give you the answer to this one at all, but we'll invite you to attempt to do it on your own. And for students who are taking this from me, of course, we can work this out together if you need me to help you in class. All right, here's another one. The thermal decomposition of potassium chloride can be used to produce oxygen in the lab. There's the equation. What volume of O2 gas at 25C in one atmosphere pressure is produced by the decomposition of 7.5 grams of potassium chlorate? Once again, I'm not going to do this for you, but we'll invite you to attempt it on your own. And for students who take this from me, we can do it together in class if you like. That takes us to the end of this lecture question. Please stay tuned to the next one in which I'll begin reviewing heat curves and additional enthalpy questions. Until next time, my wonderful students, have an enjoyable and wonderful rest of your day.